Hello, everyone. It's time for another episode of Mask Off. I'm Tia. And I'm Kim. And today we're kind of keeping with our theme of June of our getting outside your comfort zone. So we'll talk a little bit more about that after we start with our quote. And this one, hopefully I'm saying the name correctly, Veronica Tugaliva. And her quote is, forget perfect, forget flawless. Start speaking your truth. Start speaking what you want and how you want it. And start asking and listening, really listening to what the people around you say. Maybe then we will stop abandoning and hurting each other. Maybe then there's hope for us. That quote is so powerful, especially oh, wow. thinking, you know, of what's going on all around the world right now and what's happening in relationships, the divisiveness. So people seem to not be willing to be vulnerable because there's backlash. You know, if someone doesn't agree with you, you couldn't canceled or you know someone calls you names or you're this or you're that and that may not be true but they're not listening and hearing you so we hide behind this protective wall and stay in that comfort zone so when you think about it and you know the episode name that we sometimes we pick a name after but we actually pick the name for the episode ahead of time for this one is we don't want to rock the boat because we don't know what's going to happen are we going to drown or is it going to rewrite itself because it's scary to share what i want what i need show that as you say so beautifully showing that vulnerable part of us because it is incredibly scary and you know for me personally i'll share Something that holds me back sometimes from sharing is when I want to share a vulnerable experience, it involves another person who doesn't necessarily want me to share that experience on, let's say, the podcast, because I want to honor protecting or honoring their request because I listen and I hear like, hey, I prefer you don't talk about our relationship on the podcast, whether it's a friend or my kid or whatever. So it's a difficult, challenging dance to share this piece and honor a request of another because that's, as the quote says, listening to what they want to and what they're saying. So finding this dance of how do you rock the boat in integrity, it's really hard. At least for, for me, I notice that's what comes up a lot for me is staying in integrity, but still showing up and being fully myself. Oh, so hard, right? It's so hard. And that's, and that's the conversation you and I were having is where is the balance of that? And for me, it's one of my core wounds. It is one of my core wounds to not rock the boat and to, as the quote says, not speaking my truth. Mm -hmm. Right. And so by not speaking my truth, I'm not being my authentic self. And that has caught, that has created, and I don't know if I'm being over dramatic when I say this, but it feels like it. It feels like by not speaking my truth and being authentic, it's created a soul sickness, mm. right? There's this yeah. like soul, my soul and my heart wants to speak authentically, mm -hmm. but my little girl is so freaking afraid to say what she thinks and what she believes and what she values because the other may, there may be backlash, as you said, right. there's backlash, um, whether it's in the form of disapproval, uh, rejection, Disappointment. I mean, my mom was full on rejection, silent treatment. If I were to just speak up and just be me and it wasn't in alignment with or what she expected of me, mm -hmm. so we were very different. Yeah. So even as an adult now, it's so hard. And, you know, without going into all the details, because we don't need to, but just to say that I had to I had to speak, not that I had to, well, I did my soul, my heart needed to speak up and rock the boat, so to speak with you and share something with you. And it was really hard. Like mm -hmm. my hands were sweaty. 
<laughs> my mouth was dry. <laughs> like that nervous stuff, yeah. like when you're about to get on stage and speak. Yeah. Yeah. I had all of those physical, visceral reactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a really telltale <laughs> sign that it's like, okay, here we go. Here's yep. this discomfort. I'm feeling it physically and mentally discomfort, uncomfortable, and I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. And, you know, I think some of the beauty of learning to rock the boat, because it isn't easy and it's scary, yeah. is we don't have to start rocking the boat with every single person we have a relationship with. So right. where, what relationship causes you the most discomfort of that soul sickness? And maybe that's the one to start. That's the one I have to work on the most. Right. Uh, yeah. And it, how does that look? How can you do that? Or, or, Hey, this person I'm not as emotionally attached to, I can rock the boat with them more because if yeah. they push back, then I'm, they're not meant to be in my life anyway. So who and how do you show up? So it's discerning. Right. At least that's been my experience. Like, okay, I can speak up with this person. If we have a falling out, they can't hear me. Then so be it this friendship, this relationship has come to fruition and it's time to let it go. We either grow together, continue to grow together, see each other, hear each other, agree that each person is having their own experience and it may not be the same as mine, but I still can see that person and they can still yeah. see me. So we continue along the journey, continuing to rock the boat, but being an in integrity versus other ones. It's like, okay, I can, I'm going to try to rock the boat, see what happens. Okay. Sweaty palms, all of that. And look at what happened. Okay. So now I can do it again and again and yeah. again. And I've experienced that with certain people, I can't be anything but me now. Yep. Because if I am not that, I have exactly what you were experiencing, literally a soul death and not yeah. in a soul death for rebirth in an inauthentic, I can't even stand in integrity and do this anymore. And so how that's evolved in those relationships have been different, but it's been a process as I continue to practice rocking the boat with others that are even more challenging to do so. And I feel well, the value to do it versus like, ah, I don't even need to rock the boat with that person. I'm moving on. So, and I do hear what you're saying. Some people you can clearly just walk away from and walk on or move on. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are others that we do continue to keep in our lives. And when we rock the boat, there is the potential for rough waters. Let's just use water yeah, as our analogy. That. So we're rocking the boat. Now there's like these, you know, hurricane force waves because you just rock <laughs> the boat. The boat's very and I, You can choose not to, right? <laughs> I know. You can, you can choose not to rock the boat because the waters are already like very rough and rocky. Do you, do you ever find or feel that you will still choose to rock the boat because it's what's best for your heart and soul, regardless yeah. of how the other responds or reacts? Like you yeah. just need to do it for you yeah. without any attachment to an outcome from the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because it's for, it's for my own growth. If I rock the boat, even knowing that it may not go well, or I'm not going to get the response that I want from the other it's it's for my own growth right right and so like from my experience right because it, it, we don't I shouldn't say we don't some people are able to most people cannot just do it full-fledged right away yeah and so my experience was rocking the boat a little bit a little more a little more a little more yeah. Um, and it, it came down to, I'm thinking of one particular relationship in my life where it came down to, I couldn't not, not rock the boat anymore. Yep. It was not an option for me anymore. It literally, I was suffocating by keeping the mass on playing the roles, doing what I should do, what society tells me how I'm supposed to show up. And I, I couldn't do it anymore. Or I literally felt like I was going to die. I get that. And so it came to a point where if I want to 
live and breathe. Cause for me, it felt like breath. Like I couldn't breathe anymore. Cause yeah. when I didn't, when I showed up inauthentically, like my throat literally was like closing, mm. you know, that feeling of like tightness. Yep. And I mean, obviously I still was breathing, but it felt suffocating. So it came to a point where do I choose me, not from a selfish standpoint, it wasn't like being mean or just, but do I show up for, am I, am I ready to rock the boat? Because I need to show up for myself. Yeah. And then if that, then that's, it rocks the boat, but then is that other person going to show up for themselves? And it may not look how I think it should, but that's my own stuff to work through. Yeah. And so if it caused some rough waters for a while, that that's part of growth right? Because what happens if we show up authentically, we rock the boat and they're like, okay, whatever. Well, I mean, it's, we can't control what the other does, but then they're not growing, but that's not my journey. Or your job. Or my job. And yeah. so if they push back or have disappointment or whatever it is, I need to look at myself in the mirror every day. Yeah. And can I live with my choice? Because sometimes I rocked it too much. And I'm like, Ooh, that was a little ego <laughs> mm, That was ego rocking the boat. That wasn't authenticity rocking the boat. And so learning that uh, discernment of ego rocking or essence rocking, authenticity rocking. I only could learn that through experience. That's interesting. And the visual I just had when you said that is, do you remember like ever as a kid, whether you're say like in, I don't know, a canoe, or I'm thinking about those big inner tubes that you're right, in, yeah. and you've purposely rocked to make waves, mm-hmm. you know, like to make a, yep. so when you, so I had that visual of when your ego is full force and not in check, that, that's what you're doing is like literally intentionally, purposely rocking to make the waves. Right. So that's really good. Cause that's not like where we want to come from. You want to come from a place of essence or equanimity, like you said, and we're doing it for our own soul growth, regardless. Right now, and so then we this- can handle whatever their reaction is. So yeah. like when I was rocking the boat from an ego place, I couldn't handle the reaction because mm-hmm. I wanted it to go my way. Right. I yeah. wanted a specific response. So that's how I started to discern that that was ego rocking. Whereas when I rocked it from a place of essence and authenticity, whatever happened, I knew I could handle it and I was going to be okay. So it didn't knock me. So, I mean, like, yeah, I may get a little like, Ooh, a little turbulent, but but that I, it was okay with me. You weren't afraid of tipping over and drowning. You were like, I just need to hold on to the sides and I'll be fine. No, because I knew for me to breathe, that's what I needed to do, regardless of the outcome. Yeah. And not from a place of being mean. Right. Or selfish. That's not at all what it's coming from. It's the, if we're going to evolve as a society, yep. we have to, we have to make waves. Yeah. And do our, in our, do our inner work. Right. So I just want to add before we wrap up is that again, you said this is June. So we're, this is the challenge is to step outside your comfort zone. And so we're inviting all of our listeners to scan your life and look and see, is there a place or an area where you just kind of know, like, oh, I just really don't want to rock the boat with this one person. It's so hard. You're coming from your small self, your egoic self, your, as Tarbrock calls it, you're wearing your space suit, you know, your ego space suit. And it's just been so hard for you to speak up so hard to rock the boat. We're just inviting you to see if you can just a little bit step outside your comfort zone you know, listen to this podcast before you do it so that you can get some cur- encouragement to do so because it is for our growth. Mm-hmm. And I'll even add that invitation. It's also for the other's growth, whether or not they cho- take that invitation right. as well, they can, right. someone has to be the one to make the first step Yeah, for the discomfort. 
Yep. And so we can't make the other join you along that path, but if one of you know, talking in, in, in a one-to-one -one relationship aspect, we can look at this and other things, but just specifically in that. If no one makes a move to rock the boat, nothing is going to change and evolve. 100%. Totally so agree. It's a gift Good point. Well to the other. Good point. Oh, I love it. This was <laughs> awesome. This was so, so good. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, thank you everybody so much for listening. And as always, if you enjoyed what you heard in this episode, we would love a thumbs up. We would love for you to subscribe or even to give us a comment. So thank you so, so much. Have a good rest of your day. And if you want to join us on June 7th, it's a few weeks out still for our summer connect and grow call to talk about your yes. discomfort, else. Julie, where you're at. We'd love to have you join us. Links in the comments or links in the show notes, <laughs> whatever, wherever they are. Exactly. Take care, everyone. Bye.